AJ's Fine Foods and AZ Magazine um, is bringing this program to you. And of course, for those of you that are new, um, earlier, the AZ Magazine is a product of the Arizona Republic. And this whole week, we've been celebrating the best of Arizona, which includes travel, arts and entertainment, uh, services, and of course, dining. Uh, in Wednesday's newspaper, we had Best Dining, and of course, uh, Matt was featured in that uh, in that section. So we'll talk a little bit about, about Matt. The other thing I want to um, he's a talented chef from NOCA. Have any of you been uh, to NOCA? Yeah, a few of you have been to NOCA. He'll, he'll be telling you a little bit about it. NOCA, or Matt is the winner of the Best Chef Transition. And in his bio, I'll tell you, uh, tell you why. He will be preparing his signature dish, um, spaghetti a la carbonara. I mentioned to you earlier that he hand rolled the noodles this morning. And the reason why we were a little late is because he was actually cooking up. So it's going to be fabulous. It's going to knock your socks off. Um, just please make note that again, same type of program, this will end at the 45 Parader of Noka Restaurant. His name is Elliot Wexler. Um, he's not necessarily a chef, but he certainly knows good talent. And he spotted this young, upcoming chef, um, uh, Matt, who actually is only 27 years old, which we were uh, amazed about. Uh, four years ago, um, well, another chef had come in. His name was Chris Curtis. He was one that helped to put Noka kind of on the map. Chris left last summer. Matt stepped in, um, and that is why he was awarded the best chef transition because he has just done phenomenal things with Noka, even rising it, rising it higher. Uh, Matt had first uh, uh, done first-rate work at Scottsdale's Metro uh, Brasserie. Um, before he left in 2009, and he went to work with Michael Mina uh, up in Las Vegas at the Bellagio. So, um, Matt uh, is from Canada, so much many of his recipes are influenced from Canada. His New Orleans experience also influences some of his recipes. Um, his sophisticated fare uh, also includes, as you know, homemade pastas. Um, perfectly cooked sea bass, and um, he's got a gorgeous duck breast with a, a Swiss chard and date paste. So, all wonderful recipes. Um, I hope that you enjoy, and at this point, I'm going to turn it over to Matt. Alright. Well, first and foremost, thank you all for coming out uh, this afternoon. It's a gorgeous day. Um, as Cami kind of touched on uh, about Noka, we're, we consider ourselves a modern American bistro. Um, so what that means is basically, I think, is that we're a melting pot. Um, so we grab influences, you know, from not only around the country, but around the world, and kind of try and transition them into uh, American food. Um, the restaurant itself also has a um, fairly strong uh, southern influence um, that has kind of started since I uh, started heading up the kitchen there, just because it's, after I moved back from Louisiana, I actually, developed a strong passion for lots of the ingredients, techniques, um, and stylistically some of the cuisine that you find down there. Uh, for me personally, I think Southern cuisine is one of the most, if not the most, identifiable cuisine that we have uh, in the U.S. You know, when you talk about gumbo, when you talk about grits, when you talk about, you know, even a chicken fried steak or country hams, you know, automatically your mind is kind of transported to that part of the country and you know exactly where you're talking about. Um, so, for example, even though we're doing, you know, a classic Italian dish from Lazio, which is carbonara, you know, which was actually a dish, it was a hearty pasta dish made for the miners uh, in the winter months, we kind of add a little bit of an American and Southern influence on it. Um, typically, it would be either pancetta, which is a cured pork belly, or guanciale, which is a cured pork jello. But in this case, we're going to use this lovely, awesome uh, smoked bacon. Um, this bacon is from a gentleman named Alan Benton, uh, who has a smokehouse down in the Smoky Mountains in Tennessee. Um, you know, it's one of those products that we've tried to recreate ourselves, but you just can't do it because we don't have a smokehouse that's been in operation for a hundred years. It's mm -hmm. so, like that flavor is just so distinct and so prevalent that you just can't duplicate it. So today, 
we're going to change it up a little bit and use the bacon as opposed to the uh, guanciale or um, pancetta. And that's actually how we're going to start cooking the pasta, is using the fat from the bacon. So we're going to cut nice thick um, batons, which are actually we call lardones in the restaurant. And with this bacon, I actually like to leave you can, the skins on it. Typically, we might we take the skin off, but the skin on the pigs that they use actually isn't terribly thick or chewy, and it just has so much like aroma. It's just insane how smoky it is. And then they also we get country hams that we use from them instead of using like a prosciutto or a serrano ham that are aged 18 months, not smoked, but they're aged in the same smokehouse um, that they smoke the bacon. So the hams are salty and had this little kind of earthy tone because they're aged so long, but then they also pick up a little bit of that smoke um, just from being in the same room where all this smoked bacon has been hung for years and years and years. Um, we are gonna add just a touch of olive oil to get our bacon going and, and we're gonna let that crisp up for a bit. Um, the thing with carbonara is there's always a few, there's a few things that have to be in the dish for it to be carbonara. Um, one is our pork product. Um, two is uh, egg yolk, raw egg yolk. Three is black pepper, like a good amount of black pepper, and either pecorino or parmesan. Um, in the springtime, we'll use, we'll do English peas in it, which is very uh, common. Today we're going to use arugula, um, beautiful arugula that we get from Duncan's Farms, which is out in Goodyear. Um, right now, I would say that at the restaurant, probably about 90% of our produce uh, comes within 100 miles of the restaurant, uh, predominantly from Duncan Farms out in Goodyear, and then uh, a small ranch called Two Wash Ranch up by Black Canyon City um, from a gentleman that also raises uh, chickens, eggs, um, and we'll be doing uh, ducks and maybe foie gras in the fall. So we're trying to convince them to be the first uh, the first farmer in Arizona to uh, be producing foie gras, since uh, in a couple months it's not going to be. Uh, going to be banned in California, so there will be no West Coast uh, producers. And by all means, if you have any questions at any time, feel free, whether they're about the recipe, about the restaurant, my personal life, <laughs> what have you. And that's just so the noodle can start to absorb all the flavors that the, uh, from the sauce that we created. At this point, we can add some of our arugula. And obviously we're gonna we're gonna add much more than we feel like we might need because it's gonna wilt down. It's seasoned, I think, seasoning with salt and pepper, which is not the case. You know, there's other things to take into consideration, but like uh, acidity. Like we're gonna use a little bit of lemon juice for this today. Um, typically, every cook in our kitchen always has salt, pepper. Um, some stations we don't have pepper. Like on our, our fish cook, he doesn't, I don't let him have pepper on his uh, station. Um, and then usually a bottle of lemon juice and a bottle of sherry vinegar. And maybe a little uh, cup of sugar. So it's always, when you're seasoning things, you always got, it's not just salt and pepper, which would be salt and spice. There's acidity to think about and there's sweetness as well. Um, and one thing I always, you know, misconception I always have with people, you see a recipe that says salt and pepper. To me, um, pepper a spice, is a spice just as like coriander is a spice, cumin's a spice, um, you know, clove is a spice. So I think it's, you know, pertains very specifically to something that you want. You know, in this case, black pepper is a spice that we want in the dish. You know, if I'm cooking a beautiful piece of, you know, white sea bass, I might not want that, you know, I want to keep it delicate and clean. I don't want to have all that heavy black pepper on it. But then if you have like a big fatty ribeye, you know, you're going to want that assertive uh, spice on it. So typically things that we would consider more delicate, we leave pepper off of, and things that we consider a little more aggressive and hearty, we uh, add to. So we'll season with a couple drops of lemon juice right now, and at this point, taste our sauce. Pretty good, a little spicy. Um, and also with this dish to be careful of is your salt. I mean, if this does need a little bit of salt right now, but our pasta water was salted, um, our bacon is very salty, and Parmesan is very salty. So it's important not to go crazy with the salt right off the get-go. 
For this amount, I'd probably say it's about the equivalent of, of one egg yolk. Per portion, yeah. Now, they give you rest the recipes for everything, right? I think, and they did? It's in the book? Okay. There's all, um, we're using bacon today, but on that we put our recipe for guanciale in there, which could translate, it could work for, um, for bacon as well. So, guanciale is uh, cured pork gels. So it's basically like making um, pancetta um, from the jowl of the pig. And now you see it's all the egg is coagulated everything. And then you would, at this point you would want to serve it right away.